Good day, and welcome to the UFC Fight Night Boston Conference Call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I'd like to turn the conference over to Mr. Dave Schaller. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, Angela. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC Fight Night Dillashaw versus Cruz Media Conference Call. The event takes place Sunday, January 17th at TD Garden in Boston, live on Fox Sports 1, 10 p.m. in the East, 7 p.m. in the West. And don't forget, our early prelims will be shown live on UFC Fight Pass at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. That is headlined by Paul Felder versus Darren Cruikshank. Today on the call, we have our champion TJ Dillashaw, former champion Dominic Cruz, former champion Anthony Pettis, and top challenger Eddie Alvarez. And with that, we'll go ahead and take the first question. Again, ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your confer- on your telephone keypad. If you're using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Again, please press star 1 at this time, and we'll pause for just a moment to assemble the queue. Let's go ahead to uh, Mark Raimundi from MMAfighting.com. And Mark, your line is open. Oh, hello? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you, Mark. Sorry about that. How's it going, guys? Going good. Good. First question uh, is uh, for Anthony. I um, just wanted to see uh, how's it been going, man. Uh, I know that... Uh, it's been, it's been about a year since uh, you, you fought. Uh, are you feeling healthy? How, how are you feeling coming into this fight? Yeah, I'm back healthy, man. Um, 2015 definitely wasn't my year. Uh started off with the loss against RDA, had an injury, and, um, you know, I, I've been here before. So now I'm just uh, back healthy training and looking forward to 2016. I think um, I think a lot of people would uh, would have said that this fight against uh, against Eddie uh, could possibly be another one contender, title in their type of fight. Seems like now that Conor McGregor is going to get that fight against the Andros. How do you feel about that? Are you are you upset that maybe they didn't wait until maybe this fight this fight happened to see what what the result was going to be? Yeah, honestly, I I haven't even looked forward to the next fight. My goal uh, right now is to, to beat Eddie Alvarez. You know, that's just, I got a tough opponent in front of me. Um, whatever happens after that is based on what what I do in this fight. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm focused 100 percent on my fight coming up next weekend. Got it. Thanks, man. Um, I guess kind of, kind of the same question uh, for Eddie. Uh, I think most people would probably say that that you know you against Anthony was possibly a number one contender, a title under type of type of fight. Seems like McGregor's going to get that shot against us. This is going to move up. How do you feel about that? Is that is that kind of are you bummed that they didn't wait until this fight was was over to decide that? I'm sorry. Is that for me, Eddie? Yeah, for Eddie. Yeah. Uh, you know, right right now, it seems like Connor's able to make his own. Uh, he's able to make his own decisions, and there's not uh, nobody on this conference call is going to be able to do about that. So I can either, you know, cry and whine about it, or just deal with what's in front of me right now. Uh, I do think it's convenient that there's one guy left, the elephant in the room, that's Frankie Eggert, and uh, and he decides that he wants to do something different besides stay in that weight class and fight the next uh, guy who uh who's entitled to the shot but uh you know good for him <laughs> um one more thing for you eddie um it, it seems like uh it, it's a bit of a growing trend that that guys in the UFC are, are fighting at their contract they're becoming free agents you had uh you had kind of an up and down experience with free agency when uh you know you with bellator and overall what was your experience like i know there were some tough things but overall what was your experience like and would you recommend it to people to kind of see what their their you know value was on the open market I don't know if I could say that without getting in trouble by the bosses, but I, I <laughs> per, per, personally, my goal, my goal was never to, uh, my end all be all was never, oh, I want to be a UFC fighter. I always wanted to build value for myself for Eddie right. Alvarez. It wasn't about the promotion um, so much as just building myself as a commodity. And then, then, when I was able to do that, at least I can bring value to the UFC or bring value to other promotions. Uh, I just recommend the guys who are up and coming to build value to themselves, not just, uh, you know, not just go to the UFC or go to uh, these other promotions on their hands and knees asking them to give them a couple of dollars. They, they need to build value that they need to bring to the promotion first. 
and then uh, think about it that way rather than uh, just ask for a job. And, and do you think do you think that ended up uh, you know going well for you in the end? I know there were some, some issues, but do you think it ended up going well? I, it ended up going really well. A lot of it, a lot of these uh, lightweights are probably get angry about what, how I made out. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep that between me and you then. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, next question, I just wanted to um, uh, ask PJ. I guess a lot of people have been saying after seeing some of the interviews with you and Dom that. Uh, that he's kind of winning the war of words uh, in, in this fight so far. How do you feel about that? Do you think that's true? Or do you think it could have any possible effect on the, on the actual fight? Oh, man, he's just a mind talking shit. You know, I'm just not one of those guys. You know, I, I feel like uh, he's won a little bit more respect. Um, you know, I've always been a, a respectful opponent. And, you know, he, just, he can't take the fact that I believe in myself and that I'm a better fighter. What what is your mindset going with this, PJ? Because uh, you know you have, you have uh, stuff going on with Dom, and there's some trash stuff coming your way there, and then you have some. I guess there's some awkward stuff with you and Faber. Faber's been saying some things. Are you distracted at all by, by some of these things that are happening? No, not at all, man. You gotta you gotta learn to deal with this kind of stuff. It's gonna be something you have to deal with the rest the rest of my career. You know, I mean, I think Faber's just pushing for a title fight. Um, I know everything's cool. I mean, I'm good with all my teammates. You know, I just came out, followed my coach out to Colorado, the guy, the guy I've been working with for half my career. And, uh, you know, I'm in a great place, man. I'm, I've been pushing hard and feeling great. So, I mean, all you can worry about is yourself. Are there people saying that, that Cruz may be in your head? Is he in your head? You know, can you clarify that for us? <laughs> no, not at all, man. You got to oh. laugh it off. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, can let him, you can let him talk crap and look like an idiot, but it all comes down to the night of the fight. How uh, how is your first camp? Um, your first full camp at Elevation going? It's going good, man. Real good. Uh, dealing with the altitude's been awesome, and uh, just realizing how great a shape I'm going to be in, and uh, you know, going home back to back to uh, California for for Christmas and stuff, and realizing the big difference it's going to make for me is, is awesome. And then as well, I've never had this many coaches eyes on me before. You know, I've always had Dwayne coaching me and now I have four of the coaches that are watching every practice and you know I got Lisa Boyne for wrestling, Elliot Marshall for jiu-jitsu, Christian Allen, another striking coach and Lauren Mandel to get me in shape and you know like I said I've never had this much attention and it's nice to, to be treated the way I am out here. Thanks CJ and just last one for Dom because I know I've taken up uh, more of your guys time than you probably already wanted. Um, you've had all these uh, these kind of like one-on-one interview type of things with uh, with CJ do you think that's an advantage for you? Because it seems like uh, most people are saying that you're, you're kind of getting the better of, of these exchanges. Do you think that's an advantage for you going into the fight? I mean, talking is just talking, man. I mean, I mean the fight is, is fighting. That's totally different. TJ's the type of guy that would rather fight than talk, and I think that um, that's because he's not that smart. But that doesn't mean that he's not ready to fight on that day, you know? I mean, I don't look at it like it's any kind of advantage other than we're just in front of the cameras. I didn't want to do any of these interviews more than him probably, but I'm there and I got to do them. So I'm going to do them to the best of my ability. And the truth is, I mean, people want to hear what, what we have to say as athletes and they don't want to just see what we do as fighters. Uh, That's usually not enough to to interest people. It doesn't sell a lot of tickets. Uh, They want to hear what you believe in yourself leading into the fight on top of going in there and throwing down and putting on a good performance. So, I'm just doing all angles of things. Um, you know, he just still hasn't figured that out yet, but maybe he'll figure it out eventually and sell some tickets. Is that something that you also you figured out? Because it's not something that you've you always done, you know, over the years. It's not something that I figured out. I've always I've always been this way. The difference is I don't have as much emotion going into it because I have you know I, I feel at peace with myself. I have nothing to lose. You know. I mean, I'm the underdog coming into this fight. Um, I've been out for the past four years with multiple injuries. Um, so I'm already counted out to an extent, and that's fine with me. But uh, it's like it, it gives me just peace. I mean, I have nothing to lose in this situation. I'm coming in and getting a, a great shot. Fighting is just a cherry on top of a good life that I already live, and now I can just go in there and enjoy myself and enjoy talking to somebody who literally shuts down when you try to say anything to them. He just doesn't want to say anything. It's, it's weird, but whatever, you just talk and be myself and let him be quiet and, and punch him at the end. It'll work out just fine. Cool. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, guys. Good luck next week. And we will now go to David Melandra with Philly Sports Live. All right. This, this question is for Eddie Alvarez. Eddie, first off, how has your training been for this fight? And second off, how does it feel to be back in the title contention in the lightweight division? 
Uh, training's been great, man. I'm back with my home team. Uh, the guy, the guys I sort of started this journey with, uh, Ricardo Almeida, Frank Yeager, and everybody that I was with uh, when I was back in the Dream Tournament in, in 2008. So, um, uh just good to see old faces uh good to be back with guys that you know i, I sleep in my own bed and uh, see my kids every day uh i tried my best to do the florida thing it didn't work out for me and my wife so uh we're back we're back here in philadelphia and uh i get to enjoy each day day by day rather than um just wait to get to a fight and it's been it's been a blessing and secondly how does it feel to be back in contention in the lightweight division in my eyes, I'm always in contention. You're 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 always one big knockout, one big fight away from being the next big thing in this sport. So, um, for me, uh, this has never been a sprint, never. So I'm I'm not trying to get something that I don't deserve right away. It's never been a sprint. It's always been a marathon, and um, I'm willing to take uh take a- any guy in this division as they come. Uh, I want the best guys. So. Uh, uh, you know, here comes January 17th. What What's your message to the city of Philadelphia for fans to tune into this fight? Uh, you know, they they know they know my fight style. They know what I bring to the table every time I step in that cage. Uh, I I I just been uh, I just want to say thank you because I've I've been blessed to come back home, and I didn't realize uh, how much support and how big of a following I have here at home until I came back to my house and uh, just being around the city, driving around the city, uh, something as small as going to uh, the grocery grocery market and just seeing all the people who, who tune into the sport and, and show me their love. I just appreciate everything they've done for me. All right, Eddie, good luck next week. Thank you, man. We will now go to Mark Billingsley with the Sacramento Bee. Gentlemen, uh, good afternoon, and uh, I've been enjoying the uh, the interview so far. Uh, first question is to uh, to TJ. You mentioned you got a chance to come back to Sacramento for the holidays. Did you drop by Ultimate Fitness? Did you uh, say hello to the to uh, your former uh, uh, mates? No, I never. I never went back to uh, Ultimate Fitness. I was just home. Went back actually up to Angels Camp to my hometown and uh, visited family. It was just a quick trip home for Christmas. Um, no, I actually got a lot of my teammates coming out here to train with me. Joseph Benavides is actually with me right now. Lance Palmer has been coming out. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm still training with a lot of the guys. It's just not at Ultimate Fitness. You know, your eye is the one that put a stop to that. So they're coming out to uh, they're coming out to Colorado with you and Dwayne. Yeah, they've been coming. Yeah, they've been coming to Colorado to train with Dwayne and to get some training in with me. And uh, they'll come out and check it out and realize how good the training is. Did you sell your house in the in the fifties? I mean, you're completely uh, cut your ties to Sacramento. No, I still got my house there, man. You know, that wasn't my plan. Okay. My, my plan yeah. was to do what I did my last camp and to do most of my camp out in Colorado and, you know, be, be back in SAC here and there and, and be able to cross-train, you know. I feel like I built great great relationships with guys out there and some teammates and have done my part to be a, a good team player. And, uh, you know, my plan was to go back and forth, but, you know, that's not the case anymore. I'm going to have to be full-time out here. But, uh, you know, I got family, and, and California is home too. So, you know, I'll always be back and forth. Yeah. What, what have you been working on? Uh, is it just kind of shoring up everything and, and getting prepared for uh, for Dom, or is, are you working on something, uh, you know, adding a, a new component to your attack or your defense? I mean, you're always kind of adding every camp. You know, you add for a certain opponent. You add just in general and all my off season, and then you know, just continue to sharpen the tools you already have. You know, um, I've added a lot because I got a lot of new coaches. You know, I've got uh, I got four new coaches' eyes on me. I've, I've gotten. Uh, a lot more new wrestling techniques and some grappling stuff, you know, obviously continue to work with Dwayne and continue our success. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome to show my improvements in, in all aspects. And, you know, looking at the, the fights that, that Dom's had recently against some of your, uh, your former uh, alpha male uh, teammates, but then also knowing the injuries he's had, um, have you had a chance to kind of uh, game plan yet? I mean, obviously you're not going to reveal what that game plan is, but I mean, have you had a chance to kind of, size them up and, and see maybe there there are he's not going to be able to turn a better you know certain way or something like that. We talk about the strategy going in and and, and with the Dom's recent inju- injuries and how that affects that strategy. Yeah, I mean he hasn't fought too recently. You know he's fought one time in the last four years, so you know obviously you only got so much to go off of. But uh, yeah, he definitely got game plans going into these fights. You know um, 
you see things he's got habits of doing, things he, he doesn't do, and uh, you continue to work for those. You know, um, you definitely have definitely have situations planned out in my head that uh, I, I see come coming true the night of the fight. And thanks, DJ, and, and and Dominic, this one's for you. Um, you kind of enjoyed uh, on Twitter, kind of putting the uh, the knife uh, between the alpha male favor more specifically, and and TJ when when the uh, um, when the, the breakup, for lack of a better term, happened a couple of months ago, uh, and you kind of stoked that uh, that those flames. I, mean, I I was kind of wondering if you were a little upset that he left because if you would have beat him as a member of Alpha Male, that would have been kind of a complete completed your set, if you will. So what's this question exactly? Well, the, the, the question is, are you kind of mad that he, that he is no longer part of Alpha Male because you, you've already beat Benny, you've already beat uh, Faber. It would have been nice to, if he was still part of the Alpha Male. Does that even matter to you? No, I mean, you can dress up the turf, but it still stinks. I mean, that's TJ Joe's side. He's still Alpha Male guy. He's still got those guys training with him. So uh, he's still one of them. He's still a jock. He's still a meathead. He's still not that bright. And he still uses a lot of the fundamentals that those guys use. That's what built him up into the sport, so he's going to have a lot of those things. Now he's got new techniques with Ludwig. Ludwig's helped him move along and, and fix some techniques with his kickboxing and stuff, but... It's still it's still alpha male guy, I mean, in my eyes, but just because he's not with them, that's just Faber cutting him off to try to make money. Faber, Faber's always trying to get the big money fight, so he's trying to cut it off and make a beef. But, you know, Faber came up to me recently when I was out there in, um, uh, trying to commentate on the Cowboy RDA fight, and he was talking to me about TJ and, you know, just that they're not that close and, and that TJ hasn't been beating him up for the past four years the way TJ's been saying and that all oh, that's fake and none of that's true and that they're not cool and they're not friends. And so, I don't know, it's just weird because those guys all have a weird dynamic. You never know which which side they're playing because they're always trying to make money and build the fights up for the future. So, they could be best friends behind the scenes and just pretending to beef right now or they could be really beefing. But I know Faber is pretty much the type of guy that you know, he wants he wants you to do good, but he never wants you to do better than him. And right now, TJ's doing a little bit better than him. So I'm sure there's there's a real jealousy in Faber's eyes right now, and that's why all this stuff's going down the way it is. Because TJ came up through through the Alpha Male uh, team and and had that early, especially early training with Dwayne a couple of years ago. I mean, is that kind of an advantage for you since you have fought so many Alpha Male guys that, that you kind of you see almost a blueprint, if you will. Tom? Mark, it looks like we temporarily lost Dominic. We'll try to get him back on the line. Well, maybe maybe I can spin that same question to TJ, that that maybe uh, because he has, because Dominic has so much experience with alpha male guys and beating him, them, uh, that he has to kind of worry about coming out a certain style and maybe changing it for his style to to, to fit what Dominic's going to gonna bring. Yeah, man, I'm, I mean, it's definitely helping me prepare, you know, helping those guys prepare for their fights and know what I would have done in those situations. You know, I'm a completely different fighter than the guys that fought uh, fought Dominic, you know, um, as in Joseph and, and Uriah. Even though we're teammates, we all have different physical attributes and we all fight differently. You know, there's definitely no blueprint on our team. We, we do learn from each other, but, uh, you know, we all got different different attributes that are greater than others. And, uh, you know, you definitely take everything from everyone's fight. And, and Joseph had a very close cool split decision fight that uh, – and just sure. him up on the feet and was just getting getting taken down here and there. And, you know, same with Demetrius doing the same thing to him. Demetrius got the better of him on the feet. And the only reason why Don beat him is because he outsized him and took him down, you know. Um, and and just, just, just taking those things and, and, and viewing every one of his fights. And same as watching my teammates fight him as well as other people. You know, you learn from every fight. I got to give you the chance to respond to what Dominic said about you and, uh, and Faber. I mean, it seems to me it, that's, that proves that you're a pretty smart guy if you are having this uh, – Behind the scenes, <laughs> where you and Faber have agreed to have this this alleged beef, you so know, can sell tickets. It, it, that, that means yeah, that's it, pretty it, brilliant. It's 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 funny that Dominic likes to say that uh, I don't talk crap because I'm not very smart when I'm the one that's got the college degree and went to school, you know, that's just because the fact that I'm a, I'm a martial artist and I like, I like showing respect, you know, I'm not one of those guys that's going to do the WWE Conor McGregor effect and talk a bunch of crap to make money. You know, I'm in this and I want to look back on my career and know that I made the right choices and that I, I portrayed myself the way I wanted to be portrayed, you know, and, and I'm not going to look like a jackass while doing it with me in favor. That actually is a surprise to me the way he's been acting as well, you know, cause I'm cool with all the guys. And I really think it's just a way for him to, to push for a title fight, a way for him to, 
to really make some money. I think he's the one that's behind all this because, uh, you know, I've done nothing but show respect. I don't, I don't go on there and talk crap to you about Uriah when there's plenty to talk about, you know, I'm just going to continue to be the humble guy and appreciate what he did for me when I got into the sport. And, you know, it's just a little ridiculous that I'm getting crap for, for changing camps when it happens all the time. You know, when guys are trying to better their, their selves and their career by going to a new team or a new coach, it happens every day in the sport and all of a sudden it's a big deal, you know? So, uh, it's a little ridiculous, and you just got to kind of laugh it off, you know? And as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, it is star one to ask a question, and we will now move on to Damon Martin with Fox Sports. Uh, yeah, first question is for Anthony Pettis. Uh, Anthony, obviously you said 2015 wasn't a great year for you. I know that you haven't lost very often in your career, but – you know, what was the biggest takeaway from that fight with Dos Anjos? And, I mean, did you did you have to, you know, kind of reinvent yourself a little bit, or, or did you find just a couple of mistakes you made to, to get better to come into this fight? Yeah, it was just a, it was a mental error, I think, man. I don't know. You, I, I, can't, I can't look at that fight and pick, like, exactly what happened. There was just so many small mistakes, and uh, preparation wasn't there. Um, you know, I just took it for granted a little bit. So, yeah, I think I just got refocused and, and re-motivated. And, you know, I got, a, I got a tough guy in front of me to keep me motivated for training. Obviously, your focus is Eddie Alvarez, but I am curious, you know, if everything works out well, what is more important to you? Is it getting back to the title or is it, or is it getting that, you know, kind of little bit of vengeance against, uh, against Dos Anjos? I haven't even thought about Dos Anjos or a title at all. I need that right now, man. I, once I found out I was fighting Eddie Alvarez, that's, that's my main focus. Was this this weekend coming up, making the fight, staying healthy, and just being uh, in that positive mind frame where I can go in there and be myself. I feel like if I'm myself out there, nobody in the world can beat me. What What have you thought of Eddie's performances thus far in the UFC, the couple of fights we've seen? Um, you know, he had tough fights. I mean, he, he didn't get any easy fights right away. He came in, fight Cowboy Cerrone. We saw Cowboy get the title shot. Um, Gilbert Melendez, another tough guy. Um, you know, so he, he came and fought the top of the division right away. So he didn't have any warm-up fights in the UFC. And now they're giving him me. So, uh, three tough fights in a row. Um, I mean, I beat both of them guys, you know, first round, second round. So I, it's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to justify styles and fights. But, I mean, he, he had tough fights coming in. So now it's just my turn to go out there and make my statement. Yeah, and uh, and a question for TJ. Uh, you know, everyone talking about the favor, the alpha male, everything that's kind of been going on for that. But I mean, do you think the fact that your teammates have come out and supported you? I know Joseph's out there right now, Lance Palmer. I mean, do you think that tells the biggest story of 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 the people that have been around you that they are still supporting you? Yeah, it just kind of, just kind of tells the truth of what's really going on. You know what I mean? And uh, just kind of how how shallow I feel like you're right, kind of acting due to what, what's going on. You know, I mean, he's the only one that's holding on to this and continue continue to talk crap about it and. Like I said in some of my other interviews, it's kind of crazy that all the attention this whole me moving out to Colorado is getting when, you know, I'm just moving to train with the coach that I feel has given me, given me a lot. You know, a guy that believes in me and, and works harder for me than anybody else ever has in my entire life. Of course, I'm going to follow that, man. When you build that kind of connection, that's what you're going to do. You know, I mean, most of the great, greatest fighters you see today all have a super close connection with their coaches. Yeah. Uh, and, and one quick follow-up to that, you know, with everything that's happened with Dominic, I'm curious, you know, when, when Dominic got injured originally, Hayden Burrell came in and everyone believed that, you know, he was, the, you know, maybe the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport and he had some phenomenal performances. Uh, obviously, you went out and beat him two occasions. I mean, I'm curious, do you feel like Dominic is, is the biggest challenge you faced or, or, or do you feel like, you know, this is, uh, you know, the, the, I don't know, I'm just curious, like, how you feel, where you feel Dominic stacks up in, in, the, in the rank of guys you've already beaten? Yeah, man, he's definitely a very, very tough challenge. He's a great fighter, you know. You have, you have to believe that going into this fight. You can't underestimate the guy, you know, just because he's been out as well, you know. I mean, he was on top for a reason, and, uh, you know, uh, he, he's great. You know, I just I just feel that I, I continue to grow past past his status. You know, I do believe I am the better fighter from watching from the beginning and watching watching myself. It's just, you know, I, I believe I have the better skills, you know, and I'm, I'm a little bit hungrier, and uh, it's going to be a great fight, man. Awesome. Is, uh, is Dom back on the line? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Uh, Dominic, you know, for you, you know, obviously, you know, going through everything you went through to come back to this, uh, you know, I mean, what what was the, what was like, what's the hardest part of watching the, the bantamweight title, you know, get, you know, tossed around when it went to Burrell and then it went to TJ? I mean, do you, were, you know, was there any anger in that moment? Did you have to kind of put that away or did you maybe tuck it away as motivation? No, I mean, it actually didn't affect me at all because I, was, I wasn't really in the loop right then. I was uh, hurt. At that point, you just kind of got to be hurt and let your body 
takes the course that it needs to to heal. So I, I had already, you know, set down the gloves for uh, during that portion of time and, and let it go. I, Cause it would, it would have just drove me crazy to sit there and try to be upset about it or try to control it when it was completely out of my hands. You can't control injuries. They just happen. So, um, yeah, it wasn't bothering me. It was just, I'm a competitive guy by nature. So obviously I wanted to be in there competing, but, uh, couldn't. So I, I did what I could around it and it, I evolved as, as a person outside of the ring and got, got better at things I could as a man outside of the ring. And I didn't lose or waste any of those years, you know? Yeah. And last question for you, Dom, you know, obviously a lot changes, you know, in the sport. I mean, you know, the, the guys who were champions when you were last champion have, I think pretty much all changed since then. What's been the biggest key in kind of adapting, you know, your style? I mean, we saw you come out and beat Takeo Mizugaki in extremely dominant fashion, but do you feel like you have evolved a lot since we last see you? Like, are we going to see a, a much different dominant cruise this time than maybe even what we saw in the, in the Mizugaki fight? You know, what it comes down to on fight day is believing in my abilities and believing in, um, you know, just my fluidity and the things that I do, naturally letting my reactions take take point. Because I already put in the work in camp. I already trained hard. You know, um, TJ's mentioned that he's hungrier than me, but that can't even be gauged, so it's a pretty ignorant fact. There's really no, there's no point behind it because there's no way to gauge who's hungrier than another person. So it's just really what it comes down to is, believing your skill set on that day and the work that you put in prior to the camp and, and, and just having the faith that your body can go out there and do the work. And uh, I put in the camp. My body's healthy for me. And I've had, you know, this past four years to rehab my body, not take a lot of abuse to it, but to get in tune with it and um, just go in there and do work. So I'm just going to be excited to show up and have fun on that day because that's what it's about. I've already put in the work and put in the, the bad days and the good days in camp where I didn't feel good and then did feel good and all that's out of the way. So on that one night, I'm going to be uh, as good as I can be. Awesome. Best of luck, guys. And we will now go to Jim Edwards with The Mirror. Yeah, hi, guys. Um, first question to uh, Anthony. Anthony, you said at the start of the call that um, 2015 wasn't your year. What what do you think you can do by the end of 2016 to turn that around? And how active do you want to be considering you're fighting very early on in the year? Yeah, uh, the goal is to always be active, man. Um, you know, I can't really state uh, how that's going to work. Um, last year I was trying to be active as well. I fought December and March. didn't work out for me. So, uh, no, I mean, the, the goal is to stay active and, and to stay healthy. But, um, you know, the sport uh, takes a lot on your body. The training camps are... I'm just like fights. I mean, so for me, it's just trying to stay healthy and 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 just stay uh stay prepared, I guess. But um, you know, the fighting early in the year, so I should be able to get a couple more fights this year, um, and, and accomplish my goals. 2016, I'm looking forward to um, getting back to where I was at, and uh, you know, staying where I was at. Thanks. Um, next question uh, to Dominic. Um, Dom, you've obviously had your injuries the last few years, but what is it? that has kept you wanting to come back time after time after time. You've obviously been a UFC champion. You're widely regarded as one of the best there's ever been in the bantamweight division. But what is it now that is driving you back this time? Uh, I think your question is, what is it now since I've been hurt, I guess? No, no, I'm asking, like, what what is driving you back this time? I just want to understand what is your motivation to keep coming back time after time? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Well... The thing is, um, I have, I am competitive, and I do love to compete. The thing is, I, I've been out all this time not because I wanted to be, but because, you know, my injuries didn't let me compete. I got hurt at, like, around 26, and I knew my age would be on my side in the fact of healing as, as long as I, you know, just let my body heal and get back to where it could. So I've done that, and uh, it's working for me again, and age is still on my side. I'm still, I'm still in my prime years right now. You know, I'm, I'm just I'm just as hungry as I ever was to be the best in the world and to make history. And really what it comes down to is challenging yourself. You know, we, li- we only get one life to live. And this is, this, is a, this is a huge challenge. And every single one of us as fighters is doing this to evolve a- as a person. And I feel like that's, that's what this is about. You know, this is a big challenge. You know, I'm coming from behind the desk past four years and I'm about to go compete with with what people are saying is one of the, the better pound for pound guys in, in the world so it's going to be pretty crazy when I go out there and put on a great show and, and even win the pressure is not on me 
I'm getting the chance of a lifetime right here. I've been out, and I get to fight for a title again. So I'm just happy to be able to compete again and and uh, compete against some of the best guys in the world right now. I, I mean, I, my last fight was against a top five guy after I was out three years, and now I'm going against uh, the number one guy in the division. So it's going to be it's going to be fun to challenge myself. That's what this is all about: is testing myself and passing with flying colors. Thanks, Dom. And TJ, just to follow up on that with you, obviously Dom was just talking there about how the pressure's on you. He, Dom's the guy that's been out for the last two years. Do you feel this is almost a lose-lose situation for yourself? Even if Some uh, people no, might say that even if you beat him, that he's been out two years. What have you got to say about that? You just got to learn to deal with those things, man. I mean, that's still the greatest thing about wrestling my entire life is learning how to deal with the pressure. You know, you got to turn, having, turn all that pressure into having fun and get in front of those millions of people and uh, put a smile on your face and have fun, man. makes you perform a lot better when you're loose and having fun and, and not worried about what's going to happen. I mean, I, I'm lucky enough just to be able to be in a, the situation I'm in to, to train every single day and do what I love to do. So, you know, I'm just going to soak it all up and show off and have a great time. You know, I, I get to fight Dominic Cruz. He's got a good name. Man. He's got a big name. He's going to continue to boost my name up for the best pound for pound fighter in the world and plan is to be on top. Thanks for your time, guys. Have a good time in Boston. And we will now go to Daniel Flynn with Breitbart Sports. Uh, first question for Dominic. Injuries beat you, but, but no bantamweight beat you in the UFC, at least. Do you, do you view yourself as the man still, as, as the sort of champion in waiting in the bantamweight division, or do you concede that TJ is now the man in the bantamweight division? Well, it, it's not really what you think about yourself. It's you know, to the extent of with media and all that, because every single person on this conference call right now believes that they are the man, believes that they are the champion. I mean, I guarantee you ask every single one of them, they'll say they're the best in the world. So it's kind of a, you know, biased question to an extent if you're asking me. I, of course I believe I'm the best in the world. Of course I believe I'm the man in the division. But when it comes down to it, media puts us in, in an order, and then it's our job to go out and prove that we're better than the order that you guys put us in. Uh I believe I'm the best in the world, and I believe that the order is incorrect, and I'm number one, and TJ is just the best at being number two. Question for TJ. Um, many fans considered you a straight wrestler coming out of the Ultimate Fighter show, but you showed you know, excellent striking and amazing footwork against Barrow uh, both times. How would you compare your stand-up with Dominic's? Do you feel confident that you can win a fight if it stays on the feet? And how much did Dwayne Ludwig's help uh, with your striking, persuade you to stick with him and, and make that move to Colorado? You know, I was strictly a wrestler on Ultimate Fighter. You know, I only had four fights at that time and only been out of wrestling for a year, you know, so I was very new to the sport and I was only a wrestler. Um, you know, my, my growth has, has happened really fast and I owe it to a lot of people, but I do owe most of it to Dwayne Ludwig. You know, I mean, he, he came in and gave me a lot of confidence that things that I was doing were right and helped me build off of it. You know, he didn't change who I was as a fighter, but added a lot, lot to it. And, uh, yeah, I feel very confident if the fight stayed on her feet. And, uh, you know, and that, that is the reason why I'm out here in Colorado with, with Dwayne is because the belief I have in the guy that has pushed me to be where I'm at. Question for uh, Eddie and, and uh, Anthony. The lightweight division is arguably the most talented division in the UFC. But with Connor's arrival in division, it's now becoming a much more marketable div division. Do you look upon this? I mean, I'm trying to gauge how you look upon his arrival. Do you, do you view it as, you know, do you welcome it, his arrival, because of the attention he brings to, to the division? Or are you more resentful of him leapfro leapfrogging over everyone else for, for a title shot? And I guess we'll start with Anthony. Um, no, I mean, I guess I was, I was going to move down to 45 and fight Jose Aldo when I was the number one contender. So I guess the champion moving up to be champ, to fight a champion makes sense. Um, as long as they do for the rest of the divisions. I mean, if any other champ decides to move up, they automatically get a title shot. Um, but at the same time, I feel like the lightweight division has always been marketable. I mean, we have some great champions. We have some great guys that came out of the division. And, uh, you know, it's not it's not based on just talk. It's based on performance. And I think, uh, you know, the division has always been a tough division. The 45 division was one that was, uh, you know, dominated by Jose Aldo the whole time. So you get a guy that comes in there and takes out Aldo and he moves up a weight class, of course everybody's going to want to watch it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I welcome it. So hopefully, uh, you know, he stays and, and he, he, if we see how good he really is. Eddie? Yeah, I, I, I just said I think any anything or anybody who brings more money to the sport is a good thing. Uh, it's hard for me to say anything bad about it. Um, re regardless of whether people think uh, he deserves this or he deserves that, 
the the truth is is that when one fighter gets paid more, it's it's good for all of us, every single one of us. So um, I'm happy that he brings the marketability to the division. Uh, and it's it's not up to me or anybody uh, or any other fighter to say what he deserves or what he doesn't. Uh, our bosses make that decision, no matter how we perform out there. So happy to see money coming in. Outstanding. Thank you. Good luck to you all. And we will take our last question from Raul Azaga with Primera Ora. Hi, guys. Hello. Uh, my question is for Anthony. okay. Uh, my question is for Anthony Pettis. Uh, I spoke to Eddie Alvarez earlier on, and I told him I hate this fight just because you guys are the two fighters of Puerto Rican descent who are best ranked, and then they're fighting each other. But uh, joke aside, uh, it's it's a fight that could probably put you guys, uh, wh whoever comes out uh, a winner. Uh, in a spot against the winner of Connor and uh, and McGregor, uh, do you do you think that that's that's the stakes in this kind of fight? Yeah, I mean, you never really know, honestly, who uh, who, who who's next for you. I mean, it all depends on performance, who's hot, who the fans want to see fight, uh, and injuries. So yeah, I mean, this fight right here is a, there's a lot at stake. I mean, there's a title shot. There's uh, being the number one lightweight ranked lightweight in the world, and um, For me, it's fighting a guy like Eddie Alvarez, man. I got I got a chance to fight a guy that's been around for a long time and, and continue to grow my name and then show how good I really am in this game. When when you were interviewed last October, you said that if you win this fight and you got a title shot, you wanted it to be in Puerto Rico. Is that still stands? I still want to fight in Puerto Rico. I'm I'm hoping everything's still going on the way it's supposed to be going so uh, Puerto Rican uh, we can fight in Puerto Rico. But uh Again, that's up to the UFC, Dana White. Now, these guys decide where the fight takes place. But if we get to fight in Puerto Rico, I mean, this fight would have been a good fight to fight in Puerto Rico. But, uh, you know, Boston is, the, Boston is the place. In in terms of your training for this fight, you focus a lot on wrestling with EC Martinez. Uh, do you think this, this fight is not going to be a barn burner, as many expect, and maybe be more of a grinder? Nah, I, I, my, my wrestling was always there. My last fight wasn't the best display of it, but, uh, you know, it, the reason why I, ch I changed to Israel Martinez was because uh, my wrestling coach, Ben Askren, um, you know, he has his own career to worry about. I needed something to focus directly on me and, and my mistakes and my flaws in wrestling and, and get me better. So that's why I made the switch to Israel Martinez. But, uh, you know, I think this fight's going to be a, a good fight, man. Eddie comes and brings it every time. Um, I, I'm always in an interesting fight. You know, we're both tough. We both can take a lot of damage. And, uh, you know, we, we both want this win as bad as the other. So uh, it's a lot at stake in this fight. Thank you, guys, and best of luck to both. Thank you. And that concludes our question and answer session. I will now turn the call back to Chris Costello for closing remarks. Thanks, Angela. I'd like to go ahead and thank everybody for joining us on the call today. UFC Fight Night Boston Fight Week activities will kick off on Thursday with Ultimate Media Day at the Weston Copley Hotel downtown followed by open workouts on Friday at UFC Gym Downtown. Updated schedule events for the entire week is available on the UFC Press Portal. Everyone have a great day, and we'll see you next week in Boston. Sweet. Sounds good.